John, I cannot imagine what it would have been like at Spa in 66. You're, the track's dry on the grid. You're hearing the odd murmur that it might be raining out the back of the circuit. There's no warm-up lap. That was the amazing thing. If you look back now uh, and we think about the, the safety procedures of the day, no warm-up lap before that Grand Prix. And no. you were on the pole. No, uh, but mind you, uh, if you were going to race at the Nürburgring, the old Nürburgring or Spa, you always had to be prepared for a uh, situation where here you were dry, there you were wet, etc. Weather conditions uh, very frequently were quite different all around the circuit. Um, I saw this on motorcycles when I was racing there and uh, obviously in the cars. We sat on the grid. Of course, you didn't have to make a decision about rain tyres, etc., because there were no rain tyres. There was one tyre, uh, and this was a, a treaded tyre, though uh, different makes. Yeah, because I, you were on the Dunlop white spots, I think, and I, I recall Lorenzo, your teammate, actually switched to the Dunlops just before the race to be yeah. on the same tyres as you. Well, uh, and um, we had a situation, uh, actually, in the race, tyres played a part of it, in that... Uh, Joachim, uh, who was the main opposition with the Cooper Maserati, Joachim Rint, um, had uh, the tyre which had the larger grooves, etc., in it. Uh, and this, uh, you know, when, it, when the torrential rain came, that really sort of helped a little. So that brought about the tactics that I played in the race. Because I went off and uh, Rouge and then up the hill and down into Bourneville. You know, some people carry the Coco Benz, the Bourneville, <laughs> this long right hand which keeps on going and was so vital uh, to get right for the speed which would take you all the way down uh, to the far side of the circuit. And uh, going into Bourneville, what did I get? Those ominous uh, spots and everything else of rain all come in uh, on my goals. And so. Um, and immediately the thing was, take a wider line. Yeah. Off the normal racing line uh, for a bit of precaution. And the same thing uh, applied. And the rain intensified as we went round, and then the sort of uh, second lap, the third lap, it, it really came down. And of course, you had all that uh, carnage uh, where cars went off this way, that way, and everywhere uh, in. Uh, this day and age, of course, immediately there would be a safety car or a red flag. But uh, no, it, it didn't happen. And um, the John, race developed between Jochen and myself. And, and you were leading for a while, and, and then Jochen led for a while, probably because of this advantage you've just described with the tyres. What was the visibility like behind that Cooper Maserati in the wet? I took a conscious decision. A uh, conscious decision. If you go down the motorway, and you follow a car, what do you see? You see the tracks. You see the tracks of that car, etc. Uh, and I had to make a decision uh, to maintain the sort of speed along there. Uh, aquaplaning was a, was a major factor. So uh, I decided uh, that I would, I sort of obviously saw the source and etc. that there was nobody else really in it, so I uh, made a decision, OK, let's see what Joachim can do, and I'll stay in the tracks. It meant that visibility uh, was not that great. You, in fact, just sort of followed, followed the uh, rain uh, spray, etc. But what you were doing is following those wheel tracks, and that was the one thing which did, did show up. Uh, and so... Um, I just sat in his tracks and I stayed there for a few laps Why it was at its very worst. Uh, but as the track started to drain, I decided that uh, the safest thing was in fact to take lead again. So I took the lead again at, uh, at Bourneville. I uh, took my wide line round there and went round the outside there. John, what was your feeling after that race? What was the feeling of satisfaction? What level of satisfaction did you attain? It was satisfying because the fact is, uh, you know, I'd been very, very critical of a car up until that point. 
uh, Franco Rocchi, the chief engine uh, designer, etc., at Ferrari, had come up with a slightly revised cylinder head, and so uh, we had a little more horsepower uh, for Spa uh, up for uh, the uh, event at the beginning of the year, like Monaco, etc. There we had a three litre engine which was being talked about as being, I think, 330 horsepower or something. And in fact, you know, it was a 290. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and I got rather irate about this uh, when Jackie Stewart in a 2.2 BRM went past me down the straight <laughs> at uh, Silverstone in the Nun Championship race. However, for Spa it was a little better and because Spa you can keep the momentum going, the extra weight of the car also didn't count quite so much as the stop-start mm -hmm. circuits. So the car uh, was born and I was happy in that I'd been able to you know, put it on pole. Well, and the fastest man ever around Spa at that point, averaging 144 odd. And dominate, uh, and, and basically dominate the race. Um, tell, me about, tell me about the master kink in qualifying in the dry. Um, the car actually, we got, you know, handling hand pretty, pretty good. And so, uh, uh, where of course the master is where they had one or two sort of instances, but there, uh, it was always, you're always a little bit, uh, you know, touch and go, and you had to make certain you used every little bit of road to make it as straight as possible. But uh, generally, uh, you, got through, you got through that uh, with uh, just a, a, a bit of a lift. So we're talking in terms of top speed at that point, what would we be talking well, about? Well, your top, your, your top so you come in there, I, I suppose, um, I've got to sort of recollect, uh, you're talking 170, uh, touching on 180 mile now. Your, your memories of Spa in general, going there, a lot of drivers, Jim Clark was one, always used to say that he went to Spa with a feeling of fear, uh, more than any other circuit in the world. You start driving towards Liège, towards the Ardennes Mountains there, forest. What were your general feelings about Spa? I was basically uh, happy with Spa relative to uh, uh, because I'd ridden it and uh, had uh, a lot of races on our motorcycles. I had some uh, worries. Uh, a worrying situation when I'd first started motor racing and I had this two or three Grand Prix while I was still motorcycling. Uh, I went. Uh, and drove for Colin Chapman and Colin Chapman said drive when you can and uh, so I drove in the British Grand Prix in a second I drove in I drove in Portugal and I got there on pole etc and then came up the Belgian Grand Prix and he said oh um, Belgian, I said no sorry I'm doing a Grand Prix and uh, I think it was Alan Stacey took my car over and of and course, he he was killed in that event, um, and that that uh, those things make you make you think very carefully. But uh, at the same time, uh, I'd seen at that time I'd seen in motorcycling and everything else where you lost colleagues, mm -hmm. etc. So uh, that didn't influence me too much. In the one and a half liter, we'd be in a position uh, to actually sort of win there, but. Uh, piston failures, etc., partly because of the direct injection and the varying climatic conditions which affected that direct injection, right. uh, caused burnt pistons and things like this. So we hadn't had the best of luck uh, in it. It had uh, played a real part in the development of the Lola, mind you, because the Lola Formula One that I uh, had uh, created along with Eric Broadley, obviously, I'd been a partner with him in doing that. We had had, uh, despite putting it on pole for uh, the Dutch Grand Prix, uh, we'd gone to, uh, to Spa and it wouldn't go straight. You talk about the master, you know, I had to take a centre of the road situation because oh. the car is bumpy and the car weaved uh, along the road. And we were scratching our heads and and Eric, 
was there and we were down in the garage there and um, Jimmy Potton, the mechanic, uh, came along and he was jacking up a corner and I noticed the other three wheels stayed on. I said, Eric, <laughs> I don't think we got this quite right. Uh, that brought about some extra tubes in the chassis mm, and from then on the car was fantastic. Uh, and uh, it finished fourth in the World Championship. So Spa played a very big part in that development program. <laughs> John, wonderful to see you. Thanks so much for spending a bit of time with us talking about that great day at Spa.